in 1986, Detlef Müller started slashing and burning, so to speak. His town, Langenfeld, was some 80 million Deutschmarks in debt and paying 6 million in annual interest. That had to change. Now, 27 years later, the debts are paid. He shows off his budget from back then as if it were a trophy. We started in 1986, after all. Langenfeld has been debt-free for five years now. It was a long, hard road getting there. Detlef Müller is proud. Here you can see the repayment of loans for 1986 and 87. It comes to 5.6 million Deutschmarks against 5.8 million in loans. So the new borrowing is cancelled out. So we weren't borrowing so much more than we were actually paying back to the bank. Being debt-free means having extra money to spend, or even splurge a little. The instruments the students at the Copernicus Middle School use for practice were bought by the city. The kids may not be ready for the Philharmonic, but they're coming along. The city has a civic center. It has a library. And it has an art center. What it doesn't have is roads full of potholes. The streamlining began at the top with tightening the town hall's hierarchies, but without laying off anyone. We used to have team managers, division heads, area managers, department heads, team leaders, group leaders, in some way maybe a caseworker. We had a couple of Indians and a whole heap of chiefs, as is often the case with top-heavy government. So of, say, seven levels, we cut out four, mercilessly, overnight, sometimes with lots of tears shed. The chiefs had to go back to being caseworkers. But they were well paid and in charge of their own areas. It was the red tape that was gone. Fewer people are doing more jobs. The caretakers, for example. Now Langenfeld has a pool of 20 people for all of the school buildings. There used to be 50. When a position is vacated, it's simply done away with. Another example is street maintenance. The citizens launched a campaign where they handed out 1,000 brooms, and the citizens sweep the sidewalks in front of their buildings themselves. So I think the people have gotten into the spirit of saving. In Langenfeld, saving also involves getting over the free lunch mentality, until recently, parking was free for the first hour. Now it's only the first 15 minutes. Drivers have to be quick, or pony up, or ride a bike. I'm not griping over it. It's okay as far as I'm concerned. But when I read the papers, many people, from Leichlingen, for example, are saying they won't come to Langenfeld because they have to pay 50 cents for an hour of parking. Hmm. Miller sees the town as a company. The citizens are its shareholders. The product is administration. Müller cites one case of a big factory that went out of business. The city took over the debts and the property, converted it into a business park, and ended up actually making money. We had so many inquiries and took in so many millions that the entire 40 hectares were back in use within six to seven years. Today we have more than 40 companies providing 3,000 jobs here. Detlef Müller takes us into the cellar to show us the debt clock that used to hang on the Langenfeld's town hall, where it ran backwards till it hit zero, a key psychological strategy. He says he'd gladly lend it to Berlin. Germany has a public debt of over 2 trillion euros, so theoretically, we're no better than the southern European countries we've been knocking so hard. The only real difference is, we've got a huge economic might that makes this debt burden sustainable, for now. Our camera team even did their part with a 15 euro parking ticket. Maybe they should have ridden their bikes.